All right, you want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days. Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it and you want it to be extremely easy. Of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you. But uh, the reality is, you know you and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. We need to lose 30 pounds in the next 90 days. And we need to do it in a way that's doable and preferably easy. So here's our game plan. We walk every single day. We drink water every single day. And we avoid sugar every single day. We are the venters. And if you want to walk with us and talk about goofy stuff, you can be a venter too. We believe you can lose 30 pounds in 90 days if you just try. Now go get your shoes on, God bless it. Guys, I got some great stories for you today. Well, I've got one in particular, but it was so unique, so interesting, that I thought we would, we would share it. And there's a little bit of good news. It involves Harris County yet again in Houston. People are probably thinking, golly, Jesse, you live in Arizona. Can you leave Houston alone for Pete's sake? Yeah, this one's actually a halfway decent one. It's actually a really good story. Nobody perished or anything crazy, but it is still a crazy story. And you guys are gonna absolutely love this one. So check this out. There's a husband and wife. The husband is 48 years old. He's an Uber driver named Omar Bishtawi. His wife is 35 years old. Her name is Hannah Olalame. They have three kids all together. They tried to kidnap and kill a man that she was cheating on Omar with, she being Hannah, his wife. While Omar works for Uber, he works for DoorDash. He was a DoorDash driver. She meets this guy at Chick-fil-A. But check this out, he tried breaking it off with this woman two months earlier. Both the husband and wife are constantly cheating on one another, okay? Even though you would think with their religious background and what have you, they wouldn't do that stuff. But either way, they do. And this lady and the guy that she ends up kidnapping, normally they would go behind Target and start messing around. It's a really odd story. So anyway, the husband tells the wife, we're gonna go kidnap this guy and, and we're gonna do away with him. So the, guy, the husband lays down in the back of their car, guys. You're not gonna believe this. The husband lays down in the back of the car and he's covering himself with like a black sheet. She gets the guy to come in the driver's seat and if you're wondering why I'm referring to him as the guy, he wants to remain anonymous. So again, mystery guy that she's been cheating on her husband with gets in the, in the passenger seat. All of a sudden, the husband pops up like Michael Myers from a, from a scary Halloween movie, right? Pops up, grabs him, gets him in a headlock, pulls him into the back seat. He ends up resisting. The husband ends up shooting the guy in his foot and in his leg. Is this not the craziest thing that you've ever heard in your life? Husband and wife are cheating on each other. They find this guy, by the way, he wanted to call it off with the wife and he did so two months ago. He just didn't want to deal with this cheating situation. What makes it hilarious is this guy doesn't even speak English. He speaks Spanish. She got one of these Mexican guys from across the border, and uh, that's the love triangle that we have here. So yet again, another love triangle. Anyways, there's some news to this though. The Houston judges from Harris County finally give some decent bonds to Omar, the husband that attempted to kill this guy he got a $200,000 bond. Hey, Houston, you're doing a little bit better. For Hannah, the wife that tried to conspire to kidnap this guy so her husband Omar could take him out, she got a $150,000 bond. 
And when they interviewed the guy, and again, they didn't show his face and they didn't reveal his name, he ended up saying in Spanish something to the effect of, I tried breaking it off with this crazy woman two months ago, and they, they basically became my enemies. So I know you guys are thinking, none of this makes sense. This is the craziest story ever, but I will make sure that somewhere on the screen, I put the name of the YouTube channel so that you could go see this. It's one of the Fox channels in Houston, same one that we've watched before. So just like before, we got some fun, fun questions from people that watch the video. And again, I'm sorry if I kind of babbled through that, but it was so hard to say, yet so funny. And I'm hoping that when we go through these five questions here in comments, I'm hoping that it, it'll all come together and make sense. But if not, what else is new, right? So at men's AT says Uber cheating on DoorDash. That was kind of the funny thing with this. Apparently this woman really loves delivery drivers. And here's another thing. I have a feeling that if they weren't in America, I have a feeling the woman would be in a lot of trouble because there's a lot of areas around the country or around the world, I should say, where women that cheat on their husband, uh, I don't think it goes too well for them, if you know what I mean. So she might be very lucky that she lives in the US. Hey, by the way, the reason I'm walking right now, in case you're wondering, is I had to take one of these courses or classes for my job. But here's a question I have for you. When you miss your morning walk, there's probably a piece of you that says, ah, we'll just get them tomorrow. But that's a defeated way to look at it. You need to make sure that you're always walking. And if you miss your morning walk, walk at your lunch period at work. And if you have to skip that as well, there's nothing wrong with walking in the uh, early evening. It's a perfect time of the year. By the way, it's back up in the 90, mid 90s again here in Arizona. Golly, sounds like Hannah wanted a Latin lover. You got Omar, Hannah, and Don Juan. Dogwoo2099 says, so after betraying you, she incites you to murder, question mark. What an idiot. You know, Dogwoo, that might be one of those things where it's just different culture. You know, here you can kind of settle down, you can take a walk and you can start to say, hey, maybe me and my wife are growing apart. I don't really want to forgive her or I do want to forgive her. I want to move on and I want to get away from this woman or I want to get away from this man. We can make decisions a little bit clearer minded. But when it comes to some old other, other cultures, it's just one of those things that's not allowed and not tolerated and it potentially never will be. So while I totally agree with you, I think we can all agree that there's some faiths out there and there's some belief systems out there where it's just not going to fly. What makes it unique is Omar was cheating on his wife too. So you've got this situation where for whatever reason they made it very known, these two cheat on one another. It almost makes you wonder, I know this sounds crazy, but there are some men out there that like the idea of being with their wives or their girlfriends after other men have. And sometimes people have a swinger lifestyle. So you never know where people are coming from, but you always wonder when people are in these foreign countries and they come to America, are they sometimes maybe coming to America because they know we're a little bit more, I don't know, sinful? What would be the word? You know, they always talk about America as this great devil of a place, right? Well, then why are you coming out here to live? You know, there must be a little bit of a great devil within all of us for us to find this such a place to move to or such a fun place to move to. Independent 7074 says, no one is talking about the poor customer who ordered food and the wife's lover never delivered. <laughs> oh my God, that is so true. Right now, this person is saying, I am never gonna order from DoorDash again. I ordered McDonald's and it never came. Now here's an incredible question I have for you, Independent. I don't know if you heard about this, but McDonald's had a situation where apparently 
their quarter pounder meals were tainted with like listeria or something. Did you guys hear about this? It just happened here within the last couple days. And I think even one person perished. Wouldn't it be crazy if God worked in such a way where this guy was about to deliver a customer one of these quarter pounders that was literally tainted with listeria and it could have killed him? But instead he spared because Hannah and Omar, the crazy husband and wife duo, kidnapped him? Holy shit. God is real. That's crazy. If that doesn't prove the, the, the powers that be, you know, the, the thing. The thing. Famous man said that. Clat 2 says she had a thing for delivery drivers. She sure did. And guys, when all of a sudden her victim spoke, and it wasn't in English or some sort of accent, but it was in straight up Spanish, oh my God, I about lost it. I just thought that was so funny. Could you imagine going to, an Amer to a, a country like America and you end up having an affair with a guy from Mexico? That is crazy. My God, those Latin lovers are unstoppable. They're taking over the world. You ever look at the uh, Mexican families and they have four or five kids and you're like, wow, they really love to make children. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> By the way, did I ever tell you my grandmother might have been the oldest mariachi on the planet? Don't, don't hold me to that, but she might have been. All right, we got one more down here, but let's talk for a little minute, guys. I've been really enjoying this. If you kind of like me going through and rating the fun stories in the news and then talking about what the people are talking about, let me know down below. I just think it's a great way to constantly have something to talk about that's kind of fresh. You know, when you watch a crazy video, a lot of times you're thinking these same type of comments, but you don't necessarily put your fingers on the keyboard and type in something for them to read, right? You don't necessarily leave a comment. But the reality is when you read other people's comments, there's a little piece of us in those comments because I'm sure a lot of people were thinking, hey, Uber or, you know, Uber driver, DoorDasher, you know, what is it? You know, does she have a thing for delivery drivers or for gig workers? It's kind of funny. All right, this final question or comment, I should say, comes from Lan Shass, 2849. Lan Shass, I don't know if that's exactly how he pronounces it, says, I don't understand those men, uh, those men, wife is cheating. Just pull the plug and walk away. End it calmly, it's not worth it. You know, Lan Shass, I totally agree with you. When you look at all the people that equate to your ex-girlfriends or your ex-boyfriends or your ex-partners, when you look at them now that you've been separated for them a long time, and I want you people at home to think about this, it is really challenging to want to go out of your way to do anything for those exes. And when somebody cheats on you and somebody's already one foot out the door, they're basically already behind you. You just don't know it yet. And for you to potentially give up years of your freedom or even your life for a partner like that, it's really like giving up everything for somebody that doesn't think much of you at all. So if you can be level-headed, if you can put your shoes on, if you can go for a walk, you can calm down and you can make sense out of things that don't make sense. So why do people flip their wig and do rash things? It's because they give so much of themselves to various relationships. And then you start to realize when you give your partner 100% and they only give you 50%, that's why it's so hard for you to want to break up with them. You've invested so much into it. But you have to realize that life is a two-way street. There's give and there's take. And when you have a partner that's always there to take, but they never want to give, it's really a gift when they cheat on you. Now, it's not a gift if they cheat on you and then bring home the itchy, itchy, scratchy, scratchy. My, my mouth or my genitals are on fire. That's no fun. 
But the reality is when you allow people to cheat and you stay in their lives, it's just a matter of time before they do bring those things home to you. So the safest thing that you can do is let those partners go. This was just comical because it's so rare. You don't really hear about folks doing that from this particular culture. And when I say this particular culture, I'm assuming they're kind of Middle Eastern folks. You know, they might even be followers of Islam, but it didn't say they were, so I'm not going to assume that they were. But I mean, you know, it's just kind of weird that different cultures sometimes are just as human as we Americans are. The problem is other cultures look down on this bad behavior where Americans tend to smile and say, ha ha ha, it happened again. But you guys got to know something if you're not from America. A lot of times we laugh and giggle because, you know, we're kind of, we don't want to be the only one going through this shit. God, there's that beautiful bird and every time I want to see him, he always ends up running, damn it. Look at that beautiful color. Wow. He is just so pretty. Hi. Yeah, he just really doesn't like, he just doesn't like being filmed. All right, well, screw him. So anyway, back to what I was saying. Guys, think about every ex-girlfriend you've ever had. Think about any every ex-boyfriend. Would you be willing to take a bullet for them right now? Hell no! So when you're going through a breakup, take some time to think about what you're doing. And by the way, it's not us middle-aged people that fly off the handle, although we do. There's plenty of people in their middle ages that take out their husband or wife. But a lot of times you find out because that's they have, they have so much invested in the marriage that they really don't want to lose anything even though they want their husband or wife out of the picture. Where this really affects people the most is when people are in their 20s and 30s. They don't realize they have so much of their life left. They think that they're losing the man or woman of their dreams, but they're not the man or woman of your dreams. They're just people that are constantly going to argue with you. You know, they say that if you've been married for 10 years and you get a divorce, that means that you were divorcing for the last four or five years. You ever heard that saying? If you've been married 20 years and you get a divorce, that means you were pretty much going through a divorce the last 10 years. And there's some truth to that. People don't decide to get married overnight, but they usually do rush into things a little bit when it comes to getting married. But when it comes to getting divorced, a lot of times people kind of hold on to failed relationships. You know, that might even be a place where the church kind of hurts us because the church says, hey, put your pride away and try to make things work. And sometimes, sometimes I believe that, right? That we should try to make relationships work, especially if it's a marriage. But at the same time, if your spouse is sabotaging the relationship, you can't force people to be in your life. And one thing I found out in this world is that when you try to force, you know, the square peg into the round hole, you're going to be disappointed with the outcome. And like I said, it would be really disappointing to one day find out you have some sort of disease. And some of these diseases nowadays can kill you. I mean, I don't know about you. I'd rather let the person go. And I know a lot of people agree with me. And I know even the people that do horrible things, you know, to exes and stuff. I know deep down they know I'm right. But they also know that they've got to work on the man or woman in the mirror. You might have an anger issue. Maybe your anger is the reason that he or she has left you. It always amazes me that you always seem to find a couple where somebody treats the other person very, very poorly. You, I'm sure you guys have all had friends like that, right? Where you're like, wow, why are they with him? Why are they with her? There's a million bad reasons that people are together. There's a million crazy things that can happen in relationships. I think it's easy after the fact to say, hey, be smart, let them go, you don't need them. But you guys know as well as I do, sometimes that's easier said than done. What if it is the man of your dreams, ladies? What if it is the woman of your dreams? Do you really want that skanky woman still in your man? It's very easy to let your emotions get, get the best of you. And nowadays with weapons like guns and this, that, and the other at our disposal, heck, even your vehicle's a weapon. 
it's very easy for you to hit the gas and take someone out, you know? But that's, that's where you have to be a better person. You have to say, hey, maybe this is all a test. Maybe it wasn't meant to be. I just know one thing. If you take somebody that's not really faithful to you and you try to just make it work, you're always going to assume they're cheating on you. And every time you have an argument, you're going to make them feel like crap. And pretty soon they're going to get resentful and they're going to go cheat on you again. So again, there comes a point where you have to say, God, I hate this, but it might be better if we break up. So I know sometimes you guys hear me say, God, go on a walk. Don't just throw away your marriage. But a lot of times marriages don't necessarily break up because of uh, cheating. A lot of times marriages break up because of financial reasons. And it's kind of sad when you have two people making money and they can't find a way to pay their bills together and make things work. But that is just the way it is. But imagine if you had a partner and imagine if you both embarked on a daily walk. You guys could start to strategize. You could say, hey, let's pay off our bills so we can free up some of the money. And when you free up the money and you don't have the bills, all of a sudden the stress leaves your life. And guess what happens when the stress leaves your life? You start to feel a little bit better about yourself. And all of a sudden you look over at your significant other and you say, hey, I love that idiot, right? And when you find in life that you're with your best friend and you really do love the heck out of them, that's when you realize you're winning. So when you look at me, I'm this single guy that's always bitter, whining, bitching like a girl, right? That's not the person you want to be in life. And by the way, that's not always the person I am. You want to be the person that takes things well. You want to be the person that keeps moving, moving forward, that's resilient. And I think we all have the ability to be that person. So there's going to be times in the future where you have the same choice to make that Omar did. Are you gonna be the type that holds on to your wife, tries to make bad relationships work, you know, does rash things like hurting people? Or are you gonna be that cool guy that doesn't let this stuff hold him back? It's just, your, it's just a sign that it wasn't meant to be. Your best friend might be that person after the person that you're with now. And you might have a future where you never have anybody again. You know, there's some lonely people in the world, but not everybody that's lonely is depressed or blue about it. That's another reason why I like taking walks. You might find that you like hanging out with yourself. You might find that you're not really that bad of a person to keep company with. And if other people don't get along with you, it might be because you need something like a daily walk so that you can kind of get the, uh, the moodiness and the, uh, you know, the bad habits out of you. You know, if you go for a walk, that might be the best way to quit smoking cigarettes. And what happens if you quit smoking cigarettes? Your breath ain't gonna stink so bad, Hoss. Women might like you that might normally not. All because you gave up those cigarettes. And guess what happens when you give up those cigarettes? All of a sudden, you've got two or three hundred dollars in your savings account at the end of the month. All of a sudden, you've got four or five grand in the savings at the end of the year. And all of a sudden, three, four, five years down the road, you're starting to look and feel better than ever. And that's when women will be really attracted to you when you actually have some money behind you, when you're starting to make something of yourself. And ladies, one of the things that we always strive for is for you to be a queen, for you to be your best. Man, if you could get to a point where instead of spending money all the time, you're starting to walk and take care of yourself from the inside out, God, you're going to end up loving life. And I'm telling you, your man is going to love you like crazy because he's going to know, hey, Patty used to be a real devil. But ever since she started walking with that Jesse guy, oh my God, I don't know if he's piping her down or what, but she sure has changed. Let me be that guy that mellows you out, ladies. That way, when you're with your guy, you can start realizing that he's human, you know? There's a lot of pressure on today's man. Don't be that woman that adds to it. Be that woman that makes her man realize how lucky he is to have you in his life. Heck, half the people I see walking are fat, but the other half are skinny. I always wonder why the heck are they walking? They're skinny. 
it's because there's a lot of reasons to walk that have nothing to do with the pounds that you see on the scale. So just remember, this guy is here to make you laugh. This guy is here to make you think. But this guy also wants you to realize that there's something special about all of us. And you just can't realize that if you're getting super duper emotional and if your happiness is always determined by whoever you're with in life. Every single one of us had to go through dozens of breakups to get with our current husband or wife. And it's kind of sad that I say things like current husband or wife because we don't live in a world where people stay married forever anymore. But I think we should try to. So here's the best thing you can do. Get your significant other to start walking with you. Get them to start losing weight and to feel good about themselves and then who knows, maybe your love life will turn around. Maybe you'll be like those lucky guys in West Hollywood making love on the neighbor's lawn. Mala, that could be you, Lily. That could be you and your husband. Could you imagine the neighbors? Oh my God. Did you see what Mala and Lily were doing the other day? Holy moly. So that's what life's about, guys. There's a million reasons to get bummed out there's a million reasons to get down and depressed and a lot of people get down and depressed because they have dogs that interrupt them every time they're about to say something profound, right? A million people get bummed and depressed because they don't have the woman or man of their dreams. But you want to know something? Half the people we date end up being more of a nightmare. So again, sometimes you're better off being alone. It gives you a perfect opportunity to improve yourself. And by the way, sometimes it's fun to walk in the afternoon. You don't always have to walk at the same time of day. But here's the thing you have to ask yourself. Are you going to be the person that when you miss your morning walk, you just say, hey, we'll try again tomorrow? Or are you going to learn to be resilient? Put your shoes on. Just because I'm ending my walk here, that doesn't mean you can't just get yours started. You got to learn to walk every day, folks. One of these days, you're not gonna be able to. And at that point, you'll wish that you could. And sometimes that happens for people when they're crazy young. You don't wanna be one of these crazy young people that's crazy old on the inside. Stay young on the inside by going outside and walking. Yeah, that's got a good tune, doesn't it? And listen, I think the world of you guys, remember, we're venters for life. So we don't let things get to us like they do other people. And when they do get to us, we simply go for a walk and we get over it. And with that being said, I want to wish you a hell of a rest of your day. Get out there and walk some extra credit. We'll see you tomorrow.